obviously in three practices and um, I think every practice you can see some improvement. Um, still a lot to do, uh, we know that. This is why coach is coach. Right now defensively, I've been telling the players uh, and the coaches, we, we have a bunch of players that are pieces of clay and we're trying to mold them into players that will fit in our system they're being required to do some things maybe they haven't done before, which is good because they don't, they have no, they have no bad habits. So I always look at things like that. Um, offensively, um, I think that uh, you know the system's been in place. I think if you watch us, you probably see us a little bit more under center, and I think that's going to be part of who we are a little bit. I think that'll help us. So you know, as we move on, we'll continue to try to develop things and. and Continue to get better. Coach, is it at all an adjustment where you don't get to work with the kids for as many hours as you did at the NFL? In pro football, well, yeah. you know, the only adjustment is the meeting time. The practice time is the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, we're, we're practicing. You guys, if you're coming to practice from here on out, you'll see it's, it's, a, pro, it's a pro schedule. Everything we do is, is what we did in pro football. Um, I made, I told a joke to the, to the players. Kevin Y is now an analyst for us. And Kevin's back starts hurting after two hours, and my feet start hurting. So it's, you know, I mean, I, I told the players, I said, if you see Kevin Y and me getting in the car, that means you guys are at two hours, and you guys go ahead because we're going ahead. So we got to get our work done. I just think you need to be efficient. I think they're learning that. I think everyone's learning that. You know, when you, when you, when you come back to college football, and I visited a lot of places. I was fortunate enough to, to go down to Alabama and spend some days down there with Coach when I was at ESPN and some other universities as well. I visited a lot of college campuses when I was at ESPN and, and watched the practice formats and how they went about it. And um, hey, I've been in practices all my life as well. So I just think you gotta be efficient. It has to be a purpose. Um, you, want it, you want practice to be mentally straining to them physically tough because that's how football is played and you have to have movement you know, whether it's between drills if you, if you watch our coaches there's not a lot there's not a lot of walking there they can't walk because you want to stress them because that's the game of football it happens in spurts it happens four second play the guys going to huddle or they don't huddle you got to play again and then so we're, we're trying to create that as we coach them and uh, when you do that you have efficient practices and I think we want to be efficient with fast and we want to put the mental pressure on them to understand what we're asking them to do. So is the drill where uh, when you guys go eight on eight the defense is having to switch teams every snap is that part of that? Yeah and that's part of getting in condition. Um, we want them to pursue. You know, and I think once you get into condition then you become a better team. You know tackling is about this. You have to know where to miss first of all. If you miss properly there should be nine guys running to the side of where you missed. Because when you miss them, they're running away from you, basically. And just nine guys should come clean the guy up. So that's what we're trying to build in as a concept. Whether you're a corner, a safety, a linebacker, you have to know who's containing the guy with the ball. And the rest of the guys have to hurry to get there to get a lick on them. So what do you think it's an adjustment for the defense as a whole? The system. The, com the system is completely different. I mean, it's, it, it goes from you know what they ran here before uh, to a three-three-five. Um, you have to have coverage skills, big time. Whether you're in the back, especially in the back end, uh, with uh, with our two Rangers or with the Tillman guy, and we're still look. We, we don't have all our players here yet. We're going to bring some more guys in, and uh, you see guys developing. We got a couple guys out of position right now because we're looking at them at, at the. Ranger position. They, we brought him in as corners. Dom Harrison was a corner. We're asking him to play the Tillman, or excuse me, the, 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 the Rover, because he's like the nickelback, basically. Okay? He's basically a nickelback. But we call him, you know, the Rangers, the field one in a, you know, you know, open field one. So they're learning, you know, and, and, and their problem is this a new defense, new defensive coaches. Alignments, assignments are totally different. Some of these guys are coming from JC. Taryn Adams, obviously, and Dom are JC corners. They weren't asked to do all this. They, they got, their heads are swimming, you know, so that's part of it. But they're going to be good football players.
there's a philosophical difference college football and the NFL because of the wider hashes and how teams yeah, play. Yeah, the ball, you know, it, yeah. Uh, well, it, it helps you and it hurts you. You know, uh, when the ball's on the far hash, I was telling the guys, the ball's on the far hash, uh, for, for the quarterback to throw the ball, if he's on the right hash, we're going to start five yard throw. So, you know, now that helps you sometimes because of how you want to schematically call your defenses. Who's the quarterback? If the quarterback arm's not that strong, then you can almost dictate some coverage to him where you won't allow him to throw to the short side. You roll up over there, force him to throw to the, walk, to, to the wide side, and he can't use the whole wide side of the field because his arm's not strong enough. So, you know, it has some, some strengths and it has some negatives too, so you have to kind of play it that way. You say if you summarized your first week, you know, we talked to you a couple of days ago. Now, what would you say that you've seen maybe progress wise or not progress wise over that? I, I think what I've, I've felt, and I think if you guys have gone to practice, there's an enthusiasm from the players. I can feel it. I mean, how many times on a Friday night when the players are coming back saying, Coach, can we keep going? No, I can't keep going on our play, that's it. They want to keep practicing. That's, to me, that's, and I, I think they're eager. Uh, and we, we have them at a good place right now because it's a new staff and they're trying to prove themselves. And that always happens with change. It's a new staff coming in. And, but there's an eagerness about them. There's a, there's a spirit about them right now because they're, they're, they're asking, we're asking them to do things a little bit different. Even with the scheduling, even the offense, the way we practice is different for all these guys. It's different for every coach here, to be quite honest. I mean, the only guy that really knows the practice schedule is Kevin Mawai, because he played for me in the, with the Jets, and that's it. Every other coach here is new. If they went through three days of practice, they've never done this. They, this is new to them. And so I think all of that is a part of it. You have, the, you have the identical schedule that you had as a head coach? It's a little bit, I, I've tweaked a few things to help them, but, but for the most part, I mean, the practice flows that way, and I think the more they get used to it and the more we talk about it, they understand what the periods are and why we set the periods a certain way. It's all, it's all calculated why we do this. You know, I've, I've done enough of them, been around enough practices uh, where they know it's kind of funny now, and I told the players when we first started this, I said, hey, the most, the most satisfying period in the whole practice period, if there's 12 periods, it says, when you hear me say theory, that's critical. That meant the first day. And I said, theory means that's the coach's, that's the coach's part. That's his that that that's his period where you guys actually get to sit down and um, drink some water and the coach gets to coach you, you know. And so I said, you'll you'll remember that as we get going. And sure enough, I heard a couple of the night go, is it theory yet, coach? No, not theory yet. It's kind of ironic because um, we had some young guys in here that, that visit our campus and one of his sons is a is a young upcoming prospect, and he played for me. And the first thing he looked at me, he said, "Coach, you still got theory?" <laughs> and he played for me ten years ago, and he said theory. And all the defensive coaches looked at me, he said, "He knows theory. He knows theory. You understand you what theory? Theory? T h e r? Yeah, yeah. Theory. Just theory. It's a period where I just say, you know, I used to say all the time, is this is where the coach sits down and he tells story, and he's in his chest. <laughs> You know, you tell lullabies. It's, 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 it's kind of a funny, I, I made it up. You know, most people call it a water break. Mm -hmm. I call it theory. Okay. I said, it's theory. And you as a coach, you know, and I, and I just, I, I started doing this, and I just said, there's a theory period. And every coach looked at me, even the NFL, was, what's theory? I said, that's typically a nice way to say water break. <laughs> but basically, I said, you need to tell a story. It's kind of, you know, just kind of, and it's funny because, when theory is called, if I walk over into that group that's sitting down, especially when I was in the NFL, they were waiting for me to tell a story about something. So it's kind of a, it's kind of my pet peeve of theory. So. so you made it up. Oh yeah, it's just a water break, and I call it theory. It's just theory. And the players, look at this, any player that's ever played, with, Kevin Wild laughing. He's going theory. So we love theory. <laughs> when did you start implementing? Oh, when I was head coach. When I became head coach. Like immediately. Yeah, that was one of my first periods. Because everyone has them. It's just according to, you know, players can get water in and out, but the way you schedule practice, because of the way we practice, they're running everywhere and they're going fast, you have to have a schedule where everyone gets to stop for a moment. Everybody gets to collect themselves and go, okay, 
Like, you know, our, our period theory happens like we go one, two, three, four, five, six. We go five periods where we're going and all of a sudden theory's called. Everybody kind of stops. And they go, okay, we can regroup, get some water, take a knee, the coach will kind of coach you to what's been happening. And then all of a sudden we go again and there might be four more periods and all of a sudden theory. And it's on, it's on, our, it's on our practice, it's theory. And the, the players know, and tonight it was funny because a couple of players said, Coach, call theory. <laughs> no, not ready. Theory period not happening yet. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. They're starting to figure it out. Do you know, so do you know um, by the script where you're going to be in every skill period personally? Yeah. yeah, because if you look at our, our script, basically I have this script that tells you the period, it tells you the time of the period, what's being taught in that group. The coaches over on this side actually have notes what they're going to do in that period. Mm -hmm. So I know. In certain periods, if let's say it's um, special teams, and I go, okay, I know what they're doing in special teams. Let's just say it's individual. Every coach has an individual period. Well, that they have to write down what they're doing in that period. So before I go to practice, I can go, the offensive line are doing this today. Defensive line is doing that today. Defensive backs are doing that today. I'm going to go over in that period and watch those guys because I'm going to get involved in the coaching part. As I said before, I'm everywhere coach everybody, whether it's coaches, whether it's players, I'm going to be around guys. So I know exactly what's going to happen before it takes place. And I've got a mindset of going, I'm seeing this guy, that guy, and that guy today because of what I've seen on film. And we come back over there and say, look, we're doing this drill today. This is what, this is what we need. You know, so I'm, I'm just reinforcing what the coach says. I think anytime you can do that as a head coach, go to an individual drill with the position coach, that reinforces what the position coach is trying to teach. You're, you're doing that hands-on with the, the jamming drill. Oh, with the well, that's DBs. my pet peeve now. I mean, uh, you know, when you play defense, and uh, I'm all, you're going to always see me, like, hovering around those guys because there's a lot to be taught there. Um, you ain't seen it yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. There's going to be a whole lot more. And, you know, that was – that was and a lot of the coaches, you know, didn't realize that, look, we can use this bag. We walked through that drill Thursday. I came over early and I said, look, we got to incorporate this. And I said, this is how you use the big sled corners, you know, the safeties. We got to work our hands. There's still more to be done there. There's some other things you'll see as we keep on. The next one will be they'll actually slide from each one and hit it, hit it, hit it with the right hand, go all the way down, and come back with the left hand in their combination. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing once it's coordinated because it looks like a dance because guys are shuffling, hitting, hitting, and they're moving. Because that's how they got to play when they play bump. You know? Same thing when we roll up on guys, how do we jam them? When you jam that big thing after a while, because what they got to be able to do is they got to coordinate their hands and their feet. Well, how do you do that? Well, you got to do it. You got you to practice it. So there, there's a, you, you, you'll see a lot the more we practice, you'll see more incorporated there in a lot of the other different drills as well. I know you came from a military family. Yeah. Um, when you went out there this morning and did the uh, Blue Angels thing, yeah. did, did that add to it just because of you, you growing up? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've watched them on television. Uh, I've watched I, I watched that on television. It's like, wow. And marvel at those guys to be able to fly a plane like that. Uh, I never imagined in my wildest dreams I would get the call to actually fly in one. Uh, now, here, this being said, I committed to him like a month ago, and I never told my wife. And so I was debating this whole week. I said, should I tell her or not? I didn't tell her. And, and, and I'd call her every morning, because they're in California, my girls go to school around 7.30. And I told her last night, I said, you know, I, we're gonna have a meeting probably or something. And I, I called a little fib, and I felt bad. I said, tell me a fib, my wife. I never tell a fib, my wife. And so and I do this, and because I, I, I know how she is. She would have said, you're gonna do what? And so I didn't want to tell her, right? Because I didn't want her or her anxiety all up, right? And so about two hours later after the flight, I, I, I talked to her and I still didn't tell her. And then finally before I went to practice, like around 5.30, I said, honey, you know what I did today? She says, yeah, you're getting ready to go to practice. I said, no, I did something else. She said, what did you do? I said, I got on the airplane with the Blue Angels. She said, and it, it was pause. She says, you did what? I said, yeah, I flew with the Blue Angels today. <laughs> and she was, 
Well, I got hollered at for about 10 minutes. <laughs> Why did you tell me? I said, honey, it's over. I'm safe. I'm here. I'm going to practice. <laughs> but I couldn't tell her. I was scared to death because I knew what she was going to say. So. She, would she have tried to stop you? Oh, she but she knows she wouldn't have. But I would have had to hear the argument about, no, you can't do this. What are you doing to me? You know, oh, honey, it's fine. You know? And um, it was magnificent. It really was. I, I, I had no idea. I mean, when you watch him from afar, take off alone like it was like I was good I mean I, I you know I listened to everything they told me and I was ready and and we took off and the pilot was great he was he was great he talked me everything everything and we're taking off and I'm good I'm, I'm thinking I'm in a regular plane I said we're taking off like this and I'm good I'm kind of looking and all of a sudden he went like that and I, if you don't hear the tape I went Oh no, <laughs> he went straight up like that. I said, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> I said, I got a whole hour of this. I said, I'm in trouble. <laughs> but it was great. We had a great conversation. Um, just, we just talked about different things and it was it's unbelievable how fast. And he broke the, the sound barrier and he said, he said, look out to the left coach. I looked out to the left. I mean, I can hardly see the ground. And, 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 and you know what? It seemed like every morning he was going, it was so fast. It was like, you know, then he, then he did one where he says, okay, coach, we're going to fly upside down. And I said, what do you mean fly upside down? He says, get ready. And the next thing I knew, I was like this on the plane. I was looking at the ground and said, we're flying upside down. And he flipped it back on. I said, this is enough. This is unbelievable. And so, it, you know, and it was great. And then he, he made a call in so we could actually fly downtown. And so we flew outside of the perimeter, not, you know, not only miles away, but I saw the stadium. He flew out this way and, and came back. And it was like, this is wild, man. It was unbelievable. I mean, it was, it's a lifetime. I mean, I would have never imagined I'd be in a plane like that. And it was, and the, probably the most impressive thing was when I boarded the plane to get in there and all the stuff, and I watched him come out, and he walked out, he had his shades on and he had his hat on. And he was walking, man, and his shoulders were back. And I just watched his presence of, he's about to get in this airplane. And I watched how long it took me. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I noticed everything. He walked up those steps. And when he walked up those steps, he just put his hand there. And the next thing I knew, he just slid in the seat. And I was going, this dude is a professional. He knows what he's doing. I mean, he, he walked like it was like, okay, this is my plane. I'm about ready to fly it. And you could just tell, I was like, when I saw that, I said, I'm good. I said, this dude, he is real. He understands it, he gets it. I mean, he, he mounted in that plane was like, and I'm watching him. I'm just saying, this is unbelievable. The confidence of him, when he, cause when he walked out of the thing, I was watching, I was going, this is real now. Cause he's got his, you know, he's got his aviator glasses on, he had his hat on, I'm going, this is, it, and I, I kind of like, oh, this is really gonna get good now. <laughs> and he hopped in that plane and it was like, whew. That's what it looks like. I said, I'm good now. I've seen it all. I only see me. Remind me of my dad when he used to get dressed for um, for parades. And he has to, he has to have to shine his, his stuff, his belt buckle and stuff, you know. And polishing his shoes. And I'd sit there and watch him. And how everything was like just, just everything was like straight. My hat was nice. And he took the thing off and had to shine it. I used to just watch it, man. As a little kid, I was watching. I said, man, I said, this is something, you know. And so, hey, it reminded me of my dad a little bit when he walked out of there. When he walked out and he got 